What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield of VGC 2021 video. If you didn't read the title, I have a very interesting topic for you guys today. I'm going to be going over what I believe to be the best ability in best of one VGC. Now, if you guys learn anything new in this video, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield content and comment down below right now what you think the best ability in VGC is according to your opinion, not what I'm about to tell you because this is my opinion, but I honestly think a lot of people will agree with me once I present uh, the facts. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Now, when I present you guys with the question, what is the best ability in VGC? Some people may say, well, it has to be Intimidate. It's clearly Intimidate because Landorus and Incineroar are so common, and they're able to switch in and out with things like U-Turn or Parting Shot, and just lowering the attack stat of both opponents on the other side of the field is imperative to making sure your team is able to stay in the field for a long time, and is just a great board positioning tool. You're able to force opponents out when they're no longer able to do damage. Now, I would agree with you, ability, the ability to Intimidate is a great one, um, but I don't think it's quite the best one. Some people may say, well, it has to be Defiant, because Defiant not only takes Intimidate and makes it like an actual useful thing for the opponent, uh, but it also makes it so any stat drops, whether they be useful stats like Speed or non-use stats like Special Attack on a Thunderous, uh, automatically make this thing get plus two attack, allowing it to sweep through the opponents with max airstream. Once again, I think it's a great ability, but that's not quite it. Some people may say Misty Surge because it summons Misty Terrain and Tapu Fini is such a great Pokemon overall. It's able to provide a status where uh, your partner Pokemon are able to get burned, paralyzed, anything. I would say that's a great ability. Some people might say Shedinja's Wonder Guard, clearly, because they're trying to be cheeky and say that taking no damage is clearly the best ability. Now, yeah, that's probably the best ability overall, but that's besides the point. And some people may say Clear Body, because it allows things like Dragapult to run physical sets, doing the maximum amount of damage without having to worry about getting their attack stats lowered or anything. Now, I would say these are all phenomenal abilities that make these Pokemon viable in one way or another. But I would say the best ability for best of one has to be Frisk. Now, some of you guys might be asking, why is Frisk the best ability? I don't see how that could compete with any of the other things. Now, this is about best of one VGC in particular. What is the main complaint people have with best of one? Oh, people just use cheese strats. People just use this weird stuff that you can't predict on preview. It's impossible to play consistently well uh, in best of one when there are so many things just getting thrown at the wall. Well, I feel like Frisk solves that. Now, VGC has always been a game of information, whether it's information collected in a best of three situation or a best of one situation. Now, because quarantine is happening and all in real life events have been canceled, most people are playing best of one because that's what the online ladder is. And that's how most people practice. Online, in a best of one situation, efficiency in collecting that information is more important than ever because you have one shot at winning the match. Now, information can be gained through in-game cues, like just seeing the life orb damage, or checking which order the abilities go up so you can figure out what the speed tier of all the Pokemon on the field are, or just using moves like Knock Off or Poltergeist, which just outright tell you the item the opponent has. Frisk is the most efficient way for a player not only to see items, but to take the items they see and extrapolate that to figure out what the opponent's game plan is. Not only is Dusclops reliable because of its bulk, its various utilities that it can run like Pain Split, Trick Room, Nightshade, Will-O-Wisp, it can even run like Bulldoze to activate weakness policy, it can Shadow Sneak to activate a weakness policy on Dragapult, it can do so many things. But I would say the one thing that really holds it all together is the ability Frisk. Now, while Dusclops has been overtaken by things like, uh, or by Porygon 2 in particular as the number one Trick Room setter in the format because of things like Spectre, uh, Urshifu, and Galarian Moltres running around, it still sees high usage, and I would say that's mainly because of Frisk. Now, why is Frisk so important? Well, I'm gonna go through some examples today of common things that you have to sort of figure out in a VGC match uh, before you can really get going and feel like you're playing safely that Dusclops' Frisk can outright just remove the guessing game from. Now, when you see a Dragapult, there are a couple of sets it can run. It could be Sash, it could be Weakness Policy, it could be a lot of different things. But let's just use like Wolf Eaglix, uh set that he used for uh, the Colossal team in, to, in consideration. If you were to lead off Dusclops and your Dusclops frisks a pair of safety goggles on the opposing Dragapult, you can pretty much say like, okay, yeah, that's going to 
you know, I don't have to go for sleep powder into that thing with my Venusaur and make sure that uh, it goes to sleep because it wouldn't work anyways. You no longer have to find that out through having a, you know, an awful turn. You can also assume that, you know, if this thing was on like a Colossal team, it is going to be running something like uh, Light Screen, Reflect, Surf, Breaking Swipe, whatever it needs for that team. You can, you know, get the rest of the information through the context of the team. Or if you see a weakness policy and you notice that this Dragapult is suspiciously next to a Mimikyu or a Dusclops, what do you think is going to happen? If you first a weakness policy, you no longer have to, you know, have that Mimikyu shadow sneak into the Dragapult as it Dynamaxes and sweeps through your whole team. You can get that information on lead. Weakness policy Dragapult is scary. Safety goggles Dragapult can be very annoying. You no longer have to guess. Another situation that is pretty common in this format is frisking a Wiki Berry which, you know, you see that on Tapu Fini a lot. That's pretty much standard Tapu Fini. But if you were to first get choice specs, you would think twice about letting your Incineroar stay in Departing Shot. Incineroar usually is bulky enough to actually take a hit from Finny and Parting Shot out. Now, if you first get choice specs, you can actually identify a couple of things here. The Tapu Fini likely won't be going for a turn one Dynamax if, you know, they were in a situation to do that. They would actually get a lot more uh, utility out of the Finny by just having the natural choice specs boost on Scald, Muddy Water, Moon Blast, or Ice Beam. You can also figure out that this Tapu Fini is actually going to be a huge threat to your team if you don't take it out soon. So that's really big. And I would say one of the most important frisks in this format is actually frisking Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl is a very annoying Pokemon that can run multiple sets, it can run Light Clay, it can run Lagging Tail, and it can run a whole bunch of different uh, moves on the Pokemon, whether it be Fake Out or uh, light screen or reflect or taunt and just by figuring out the item you can sort of see which way it's going if your dusclops frisks a lagging tail on the grim snarl now you know that this thing is definitely carrying trick and if it already revealed fake out earlier on in the match you can pretty much assume that it's not carrying dual screens because it's not able to do anything beyond support at that point you can assume that it has spirit break and likely not just running one screen taunt if you frisk a light clay on that thing not only can you say, okay, it's safe to set up my Colossal or my Weakness Policy Pokemon, I don't have to worry about a Lagging Tail getting tricked onto them, but you can also pretty much identify that they're running Dual Screens and Spirit Break and probably Taunt, because Dual Screens sometimes runs Fake Out, but they would click it earlier on in the match. So that's huge information. Another common situation you'll find yourself in is trying to figure out whether the opponent has a Choice Bandit Urshifu or a Focus Sash Urshifu. And this is actually a really big one for Dusclops in particular. Identifying the Urshifu's item on lead means that there are going to be certain situations where yes, your Dusclops can actually stay in on the Urshifu and go for something like a burn, or no, you should switch out. A Choice Banded Urshifu has a pretty solid chance of knocking out Dusclops, I believe it's 50% on maximum defense Dusclops. And a Focus Ash Urshifu will never Oko Max Defense Dusclops since it's already doing a crit with Wicked Blow. By frisking either the Choice Band or the Focus Ash, you no longer have to guess, oh, I can just go for a Max Airstream into this thing and I'll be fine because it'll get one shot because uh, it's probably Choice Band. No, now you know it is Choice Band and now you know when it is Focus Ash, allowing yourself to uh, correctly identify when to double into this thing, when to not, when to stay in with your Dusclops, when to not. Glacier is another really big one that uh, a lot of people don't even realize can run two different items. I've seen a lot of people just saying like, oh yeah, Glacier always runs weakness policy. And I'm like, hold up, have you never faced Life Orb Glacier? That thing's a threat. So uh, if you see a Glacier in the field, a lot of people are really hesitant to hit it with a, uh, a super effective move when it's Dynamax, since it likely won't knock it out, even though the super effective move is the best option in that situation. When you take into, when you take into account the fact that it could be running a weakness policy, it makes it so you're less likely to want to click that in fear of getting swept. So, if your Dusclops were to frisk a weakness policy, then you would know, okay, maybe I should hold off on that, may play a little bit more defensively, at least until the Dynamax ends. But if it were to frisk a Life Orb, you'd be like, okay, whatever, let me go for a Max Steel Spike, make sure that I can actually boost these defenses. I know for a fact it's not going to benefit from my Max Steel Spike, and I can actually go on the offensive here. And another really fun one that I really hate facing is the Regieleki on lead. Because Regieleki on lead tells you pretty much nothing. Um, it tells you, hey, there's a Regieleki on the other side of the field. If you can frisk a Light Clay, you can assume that this is going to be more of a supporter of Regia Likey. It's definitely got dual screens. Electroweb is a given on pretty much every set, and either Volt Switch or Thunderbolt is pretty much always going to be the last move. If you were to frisk a choice specs, you could say, okay, maybe we'll skip on the taunt today. Maybe I won't try to stop the screens because they just don't exist. If I stay in here and taunt this thing with my Grim Snarl, I will be annihilated by a Volt Switch. 
<laughs> so those are just some really important things to, to take into account uh, when you're using something like uh, Frisk on a Pokemon. I think that Frisk removes so many guessing games from this uh, particular format and pretty much every format. Like Dynamax is like the most volatile format we've played so far in my opinion. Even more volatile than something like VGC 2019 or 2016. Uh, I would say just getting items on lead is so huge in terms of winning a best of one situation. Now, I won't say that like every Pokemon with Frisk is, is gonna be great because if we were to look at like every Pokemon with Frisk, the selection of Pokemon is pretty bad. <laughs> Grimmsnarl can run Frisk, but it wants to run Prankster most of the time. Noivern can run Frisk pretty reliably. I think that's an excellent um, ability for it. Uh, however, it's not the best Pokemon uh, in doubles. Uh, Dusknoir, you know, might as well just run Dusclops. Alolan Executor, I would say run Frisk. Harvest could be useful. Gothitelle wants to run Shadow Tag. Gorgeist can probably run Frisk. Uh, Orbital probably wants to run Frisk. Trevenant probably wants to run Frisk or Harvest. Uh, Wigglytuff wants to run competitive, and the list goes on. Pretty much, they either are outclassed by Dusclops itself, or they have better abilities, or they're just not very good Pokemon. Now, I think Frisk would be absolutely busted on other Pokemon. <laughs> or not, not absolutely busted, because it doesn't actually benefit the Pokemon itself. But I feel like Dusclops itself gains so much utility from Frisk that it's a big reason why people should be using it. Uh, and I think that if Frisk was more widely distributed, uh, the need for dust cups wouldn't be so high. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Have I made a case for why Frisk is the best ability in best of one VGC? Do you disagree? Do you agree? If, did you enjoy the video? Leave a like on it, comment your opinion down below, and yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.